Haere Mai, and welcome to Cult Chat, the podcast where we talk about coercion, control, and all things cultish. I'm Dr. Caroline Ansley. I'm a medical doctor. As a child, I lived at the Centrepoint community, a notorious cult in New Zealand, and now I run a website that advocates for the former children of the community. I'm Liz Gregory, and I run the Glory of Our Leavers Support Trust, and I'm privileged to walk alongside people after leaving this group as they embark on their new lives. And I'm Lindy Jacob. I'm a former member of the Exclusive Brethren, and I'm part of the Olive Leaf Network, a new initiative in Aotearoa to support leavers of high-demand religious groups. Come with us as we unpack the cult playbook. We'll be talking to experts and leavers of coercively controlling groups, and we will call for Kiwis to cult-proof their lives. Come with us as we traverse the cultiverse. A warning, this podcast contains references to subjects and discussions which may be difficult for some people to hear. Please take care of yourselves and your whānau when listening. Hey ladies, how are you doing? Are you ready to slip, slop and slap? Very (laughs) much so. Gosh, that hasn't looks... the weather been good? Wow, you look like you're just had a suntan. Of course, only those people who are watching us on our YouTube channel will actually be able to see us. But Lindy's been out clearly in the sun and she's slathering it all over herself. <laughs> yep, got to slip, slop and slap with this horrible old um, New Zealand, what is it, the hole in the ozone layer or, or whatever it is. You missed a bit right there. <laughs> that is, is a mole okay it's there's nothing I can do about that <laughs> yeah hope everyone had a good Christmas yeah yeah had a fantastic Christmas and yeah I mean Wellington's we've we've stayed in Wellington this time and uh, we, we're not going away anywhere and Wellington's not renowned for its sun high sunshine hours but um yeah we it, it's been pretty mild so far so that's good had you thought that using the word Christmas could actually be a real turnoff for people who have come out of like religious cults? Because so mm. many of them actually ban Christmas and they call it heathen mass inside Glorivale. Like they don't even use the word. It's like a pagan festival. Yeah. yeah. Yes, mm. that, that's fascinating. And it's funny when Christians bicker about that because some Christians are like really into it and then others, yeah, like think that it's from the devil. It's quite funny. It cracks me up. But no, I actually do feel that, Liz, because, um, th- yeah, this last Christmas for the first time ever, we got like a proper Christmas tree. Oh. We, we've done sort of little Christmassy tree bits and pieces in the past. But because, yeah, I was born being taught, <laughs> sorry, I was raised being taught that Christmas is like a pagan festival and mm-hmm. we it certainly have no trees we have no presents and you and you also have no Santa and you don't we didn't even celebrate Christmas at all like yeah it's considered like sinful to celebrate it at all and so for me I've sort of yeah I I find that when people leave a group like that they often go one way or the other they're either this they they keep that belief and they're kind of like I don't care about Christmas me it doesn't really mean anything to me or others are like oh my gosh I love this I want my kids to have what I never had and the other people who like fill their houses with crazy Christmas stuff and have a <laughs> tree. Yeah. So I'm I'm not that one. I'm more the like meh, like it just it doesn't mean that much to me. But mm-hmm. yeah, we've got we got young kids now and I was like, oh, I should do this like Christmas tree thing for them and let them hang up the ornaments. And um and people are telling me, yeah, stop being a Grinch and get into it. Your kids will love it. So yeah. yeah. What about yeah, you? I'm- I'm all for being a Grinch, I have to say. I've bought my son some Grinch Grinch pajamas for Christmas. Or I did <laughs> buy them for him. Yeah, yeah. We um we uh I, I want to know what you guys think of this. I've got two teenage sons, and on the fourth of December, my thirteen year old uh, admitted that he had eaten all of the chocolate in his advent calendar. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> he was hungry. <laughs> he's he's not six. He's thirteen. Yes, oh. mm. yes. yes there's some work to do there. There's some self control yeah. control to instill. There's okay. some issues. There's Don't some issues. you go giving him any more chocolate for every day? Oh no, no. no. And I said to him, no Advent calendar next year. 
Yeah, you've you've stuffed it. You've put a nail in your advent calendar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, we didn't get through to December twenty five. I tell you. Ah. Yeah. Put chocolates in it that he doesn't like. Like you know, if he doesn't like black licorice, fill it up with something like that. Mm. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, that might take away the motivation. <laughs> No. Anyway, so Jan- it's the beginning of January. Mm. Where are you both? Oh, can't you tell? Can't you see the waves of Tahunanui Beach in Nelson? <laughs> I'm not sure if they've got those palm trees, Liz. Look, I'm like 46. I've been coming here since I was like three or four years old. Like That's every beautiful. year of my life except one year, I've come to the same camping ground near the sa- on the same similar sites and um, – My family have come up for all those years and now we bring all our friends and we have fun and we rest, read, relax, play games, laugh and have a good time. Lovely. Amazing. Do you actually sleep in a tent? Oh, yes, yes. We've got like a three-room tent, of course, for the two of us, like a dressing room, (laughs) a middle area with like a a fridge and a whole Mm. kitchen set up and then a bedroom. Oh, and then a sunroom. It's a four-room tent. And that has all the games, tables, and oh look, we have and quite the setup. I yeah. I actually visited Liz and Graham last year. I think I'm going to visit too. Yes. Yeah. Really I visited. Fun. I've seen the setup. Yeah, yeah, Impressive. it's great. We we go for three weeks, and then yeah. after that, glampers really. Aren't we? We're glampers. Yeah, we take bunting and lights, and we have yeah. a good time. And then we take Christmas music as well. And then we go um, after that, we've got a new theme. We always used to say, let's do the three weeks in Nelson and then come home and have like a week or two at home before we get into work. But that's just a joke because it just all comes, everything, the world just comes rushing in on you again. So I've learned what you do is you stay away longer because you might promise yourself, I'll have three weeks now and then I'll have a week or two later, but you never take the week or two later. So I've learned, go away for like five weeks. So now we're doing this new thing. It's you go for three weeks to Nelson, you have the social fun with all your friends and family coming, and then you go away with just the four-wheel drive and the pop-up tent. And so we'll be heading away in a couple of weeks, and we'll do, this time we'll do a couple of weeks around Golden Bay. And you don't plan that part, and you live literally in a pop-up tent out of the back of your vehicle, and you leave your trailer with your other tent elsewhere. You pick it up mm. before you drive home. Sounds Last good. year we went up Northland and did that wee little. It's like fishing. It's just quiet stuff, reading books, contemplating. I hope you're going to read some of the books we talked about in our podcast last time. That's exactly what I'll be doing. Yay! But you, cares you've got you've got. I brought my kitten on holiday. <laughs> as you can see, as the YouTube viewers will see, there's a kitten on the screen. Did your kitten go on the back of your bike? You got one of those carriers. Oh, so that anyway, um, we'll pretend you can't see the kitten, um, and that I've just been cycling on the timber trail. Awesome! In the middle of the North Island, yes, in the Waikato. Nice. Gosh, you're just yeah, yeah, and we're heading after that. We're heading off to uh, to a campground in a Portiki on the Bay of Plenty. Well, we're looking forward to. Some sun and some volleyball and oh. whatever else they do in these campgrounds. Do you take? So a not tent? quite. I'm well. I'm not quite the uh, the camper that you are, Liz, oh. because the thought of packing that trailer fills my heart with oh, dread. I love it. I can't wait. Of course you do. Of course you do. But I don't want to give up those two days of my life <laughs> at the beginning or at the end to pack and then unpack. Oh no! Hang on. There's the other two days. There's the when you get to the camping ground. Two mm-hmm. days to unpack, mm-hmm. and then when you leave, there's two days to repack. So that's eight days of your life you lose just because you're camping. That's why mm. you have to go away for five weeks, make it worthwhile. Mm. And yeah. the seven hour well, drive to get there. Mind yep. you, Kaz, I must say, I was just about to comment that you sound like an active relaxer holiday person because, you know, biking and sweating Ooh. and mm. exercising is not everyone's idea of a really good holiday. But it obviously- Yeah, each to their own, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, we need to um, move on with focus. Yeah, come on, people. Interesting topic at hand, Ooh. which is what are our favorite podcasts? So for when you've oh. got long drives on your as you head to your mm. or back from them, what are you going to listen to to keep you awake? Well, have we got some suggestions for you? Who wants to start? Oh, oh yeah, I want to start. I want to start. 
Yeah. I listened to F, a fantastic podcast series by Tim Elliott and Camille Bianchi, who are one of them at least, is a, a journalist in Australia, that they've done this series called Inside the Tribes, which I think is about 10 podcast series or maybe slightly longer, um, all about the 12 tribes. And I had never heard of the 12 tribes until about a year ago when I was yarning to a friend of mine and discovered that a friend, uh, that a family member of this good friend of mine, uh, all of that family is in the 12 tribes mm. over in uh, Australia. And so we had lots of yarns about that and I learned a little bit more. And then, oh, how helpful. There's a podcast series mm. so I can really get into it and understand this and support my friend a bit better. Um, so this is, it's a kind of a biblical based group. Um, so it's a Christian um just on that note, like, let's be honest, there are a heck of a lot of Bible-based culty groups. It's it's a bit of an indictment on um mm. on on the Christians of the world. I mean, yeah, they- but I reckon if we were in the Middle East, that'd all be Quran-based. So it's just what we it's just what we grow, we're grown in, and mm. we're in, and you know, like we're going to talk about gurus soon, and you know, mm. there's plenty of Hindu-based kind of harmful groups. So it's just where we are, right? Because we're kind of in the West that's been has been dominated mm. by the Christian mm. state. Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. It's, it's something yeah. I've been thinking about. I was like, are there mm. any culty groups among the other major faiths of the world? Yes. Well, we're about to do after this and a few a few ways down. We're doing some gurus, so we'll learn all about the Hindu uh, Hindu way of well, not the Hindu way, but the way that Hinduism Can is, be. Ru- is ruined by um, right, right. Okay. the groups. Okay, so back to Inside the twi- Tribe. So it follows this couple, Mark and Rose, who are recruited into the group, I think. Mark might be a New Zealander, actually. Rose is from somewhere else. So they're in Australia. They get recruited in. They start a family. I think they had three kids. And it follows their journey mm. in this group. The, the, and the, I think oh, this is what it does. It does this wonderful job of revealing their naive optimism. Mm. as they 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 reveal what it is about this group that draws them in why they're attracted why they fall in love why they give up everything to be part of this closed loving connected community of people who want to grow and and deepen their faith and do the right things from a christian perspective and that's that's how they see it initially and then things just get ugly slowly mm. over time mm. and and that's what they do a fantastic job of over like kind of 12 10 12 episodes so you gotta you gotta be committed but mm. they use the uh, interviews from other um, people from other parts of the world like the group actually started in America and they go to mm. some to the area where it first starts and interview some of the original mm. people around there and so it it's it's um it's really interesting it, what what's a little bit different about it, and again, it's triggering. This is not for everyone. Uh, is there's some extreme abuse of children, and you know, like I was in a group that abused kids, so I guess I'm drawn to this context, sort of mm. uh, understanding how people can allow harm to happen to their mm. children. So I guess I'm trying to I'm listening, and I'm going, how? What's the thinking of the adults? What's the thinking of the mm. parents that allows? themselves to, to get pulled along a path where they go against their own better judgment and start to allow harm to happen to their kids. So the focus on this one is not sexual abuse, it's physical abuse. There's a really extreme spare the rod, spoil the child mentality mm. in this group. And yeah. So the other so there's a number of features. There's a whole the whole insider outsider. There's the whole change your name. So they all um, adopt uh, Jewish or Israeli mm. names and and identities and personas. There's and a, so the twelve tribes title is it's alluding to the twelve tribes of Israel in the Old mm. Testament and then God's yeah. chosen people moving into yeah, yeah, the yeah, land yeah, of Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there's a, a enormous amount of exploitation of workers. So mm. you know um, that's interesting. You hear about they um, there's this whole theme about apparently. The group is well known for going to festivals and selling food. Um, they have this business called the Yellow Deli, and they make wonderful food. And a lot of people are interviewed, and they talk about how wonderful the food is. And really, oh, I quite like the Yellow Deli. It's 
great food, but oh, they don't look after their people. Mm. Mm. So it sort of raises that whole issue of of the business um, using free work. Mm. And the other thing that comes out is the constant migration of people when mm. things get challenging. So someone starts to raise a question, they have a problem with a teenage child, they get moved, families get separated, they go to Canada, they go to, um, where else do they go? Other parts of Australia. Yeah, they get shipped mm. around this family and they get broken up. Mm. Um, so they have long periods where the dad and one of the sons are separated from the mum and one of the other the other two kids. And it's just, you know, like this con- – and, and throughout, you're hearing the story of – the the mother Mark uh, Rose and the father and they they they're talking about how, what was what it was like and their confusion and um yeah lots of losses like it really digs into um the thing that really struck me was the impoverished medical care mm-hmm. that they experienced you know like there's a there's a high rate of stillbirths in this group because of mm. the mentality that God will take care of their physical needs and that they don't need to have antenatal care when they're pregnant. Mm-hmm. They don't um, need to take their children to the doctor. So there's like real uh, health neglect in this group, mm. which I was really interested as a doctor to hear about. Yeah, so it, it's a it's a great series, but there's a lot of yeah potential triggering. But I think. What what I really enjoyed about it is that it really highlights how how these people are manipulated and they bring in their idealism and their hope for a better life and it gets used against them and they get mm-hmm. exploited and then they get trapped, mm. you know, like they just talk about how can I get out and there's no way to get out. They've got mm. no money. They've got no people on the outside. Um, they're stuck in the middle of nowhere. They really are completely trapped. Mm-hmm. And I think... Yeah, if you're struggling to kind of understand how people can move from fully independent and free to trapped, this is a fantastic kind of audio way of um, following that journey from like quite two quite normal people to to a family that's really just trapped and destroyed. Um, that sounds really fascinating. And so just to clarify, are you saying that they, um, this couple who are the primary people they interview and follow, Were they recruited as a couple or as individuals? Yes, they were recruited as a couple. Yeah, I can't quite remember what the context was. In their 20s or quite young? Can't remember. I think it was before they had children. Mm -hmm. Um, They were in there for quite a long time because they ended up leaving when they had a teenager that was, well, they didn't end up leaving, but the things really went bad when their teenage son um, started to rebel. Mm. So it was the second generation that really started to rock the boat. Mm. Okay. Which makes sense, right? They, they're starting mm. to kick back against, yeah, against what it's morphed into. Mm. I think the why my ears are cracking up at that because um, the the second highest um, people who contact the Olive Leaf Network, when I look back at who's contacted us since we've launched, mm. um, highest the second highest group is people who have got caught up into Shin Chionji. Uh, and yes. uh, and the stories coming from them really scare me actually. Like I've I've tended to, yeah, before this year, I've heard about Shinchonji now and then and thought, oh yeah, it's this group that's recruiting a few people, but it's really fringe. Whereas I've started to see mm. that um that they are a group that I believe that New Zealand society and international, internationally, countries should be really concerned about. Um mm-hmm. there's re- there's reports from Australia and Germany and um, other countries as well as New Zealand, where this group is, I think, the most aggressive mm-hmm. and the most active with recruiting um, people that, that's happening currently in New Zealand. Um, All over Facebook, university campuses, massive. Yeah, the, the, the recruiting and it is, is, yeah, it's very aggressive, like much more so than I realised, like to the point of um, mm. People apparently, um, yeah, going and recruiting in the aisles of Kmart mm. and um, in libraries and in shopping malls. Like and in this, churches. Going yeah. to someone mm. else's church and recruiting there. <laughs> they're doing, yeah, they're doing that a lot. And so yeah. I think that's interesting because th- we know that there was an explosion of groups right in the 70s and 80s and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and some of these stories are coming out now, like the Children of God and, and um, the 12 mm. tribes. And, and that kind of thing. And it's easy to think, oh, that was like 20, 30 years ago. That kind mm. of happened now. My teenagers aren't at risk of getting recruited by that or whatever. Mm. Whereas it's like, oh, no, hang on. Like mm. this threat, and it is a threat, 
is very much still alive and active in um, New Zealand society today. So that that sounds like there could be a lot of really good learnings from that, Kaz. Who would mm. you who would you recommend that podcast to? Well, like I say, it doesn't shy away from the physical abuse of children and uh, things like um, stillbirths. Like there's a there's a really quite mm, difficult bit about stillbirth in, in the in the um mm. thing so you know maybe maybe you know older teenagers um you know someone who's trying to unpack their own experience and understand how they got sucked in I think I think because that the the vulnerability of these two main people is just so like they they say things like they they talk about their guilt about what they took their children into you know mm. so they raise these issues about like their responsibility as adults to their children as well which is I think helpful as a second generation person to kind of go well someone has recognized that that Mm. that there were consequences for the kids and there were massive consequences for these children um so yeah I I would I would recommend it to anyone also also to support people I think because that's the thing is that when um you're trying to support a person in your life who's in a group um it's hard to kind of understand why well like why are you sucked mm-hmm. into this thing that just looks so bad mm-hmm. and I think that's what this does is it sort of slowly takes you through the um the loss of idealism is they mm-hmm. they slowly kind of like the old sort of frog in the water uh analogy they don't realize that what they signed up for is not what it becomes Mm. and they end up like starved and overworked and you know like not around anyone they love then they really are really imprisoned Mm. you know like without the basics of life and you go how did you get here Mm. but this the series takes you there it takes you to how they got there Mm. Um, that's on my list case the seven and a half hours drive Back home or around the next stage of the holiday, 12 tribes inside the tribes, inside the tribes. Yeah. Okay. So who's up next? Go on, Liz. Take it away. Great. Well, I've got one that won't be for everyone. Um, It is an explicitly Christian and quite conservative sort of podcast series, but I appreciate it. It's called Cultish. And it's also a little bit edgy. They're quite fun, um, fun hosts. And it's it's good for engaging the wider sort of Christian um, sector, warning them about um, all sorts of cults, including um, Christian cults. But more than that, it, it's other groups, even alien, alien. You know, they go a little bit off off track at times and look at all sorts of other interesting things. So they do little sort of mini series or or one offs. They even do movie reviews. Look, they've even got fantastic t shirts with things like um, "Bad Theology Hurts People," <laughs> and so they really are talking to that sort of Christian audience, saying if people understood their Bibles and and and, and better and had a better theological perspective it would be really helpful um, and that might actually safeguard people from drifting into the more harmful and unhealthy um, Christian groups so they they would say doctrine matters basically they think bad doctrine leads to bad practices they've got like 39,000 followers they're out of America Mm -hmm. so they're a reasonably large and well-known group Um, the comments are always fascinating because you've got uh, sort of non-Christian people in there sort of just criticizing general religion um, not recognizing that um, all general religion and all general Christianity is is not a cult by virtue of the fact that it's Christian or religious. Uh, that's not what makes a cult. A cult are those groups that have sociologically harmful practices and, and beliefs that, yeah, like you talked about the entrapment and they have all those other features that if you go back and listen to our first couple of episodes, we discuss what is a cult. And so, yeah, I, I find it really interesting. It's quite um theologically sound and talks a lot about you know grace and all of those important features a lot of cult groups are all about rules and legalism and um yeah this is um a much more sort of gracious approach out of a balanced you know view of um of, of the christian faith i guess yeah mm. so yeah it's not for everyone but it's, it's a good it's a good you know probably a slightly different audience from inside the tribes so, so. yeah definitely <laughs> this for is, everyone here today yeah no this is really yeah really looking at challenging those you know challenging those those beliefs and doctrines that christians mm. hold and what, what are some of those beliefs and doctrines actually mean mm. Mm. So then, can, yeah so in terms of who might enjoy that one liz who, who would you recommend that to 
Yeah, it's going to be a thinking Christian audience who, yeah, basically, yes, people who are uh, are really interested in, you know, thinking What's more deeply. It it's called cultish. So so it is it is explicitly about culty things. Oh, it's entirely about culty things. Yeah, they do deep dive interviews. They've done, they get the leader of, the guy that was second in charge of Shin Shong Ji, so we're just talking about him. And yes, and no, no, they're right across the board doing all of the all of the survivor stories, all sorts. But, but in oh, their discussions, it's a it, very explicit theological mm-hmm. discussion of how yeah. bad pra- bad beliefs and theology can lead to bad practices. Um, yeah, so it's yeah, people with a Christian worldview. Yeah, I've been noticed that when I've talked to the people in my life about. Mm. The podcast that we're doing um the christians that i know their ears pop up in a way that other people's ears don't pop up mm. and i was telling someone about this the other day and they said that's because they've got skin in the game and i think that's the thing is if you are a practitioner of a faith mm-hmm. and it's being distorted mm-hmm. by a group mm-hmm. it you've got an interest yeah. Okay. You know, mm. uh, it's quite different from you just like looking in from the outside mm-hmm. and going, oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, yeah. You know, you don't have skin in the game. Something mm-hmm. that dearly, dearly matters to you isn't being wrecked and distorted and mm-hmm. ruined, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think. Yeah, which would be true of any any faith or any spirituality, right? Like people who are, yeah, connected with all sorts of spiritualities would feel the same way. But yeah, you're right. Abs- absolutely. If yeah. Matters matter to you, then yeah, of course you care about it when those things mm. are being distorted and used to harm and abuse others. Mm. Yeah, we should, we should be caring. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, that sounds that sounds really interesting, Liz. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your well, turn, Lindy. Yeah, my turn. I think um for me, you know, first cab off the rank would have to be let's talk about sects, um, mm-hmm. which is Sarah Steele's mm. fabulous podcast. So she's um, an Australian, but she researches culty groups and has done for, I think, over a decade. I can't quite remember, but she's an award-winning podcaster. Mm. What I appreciate about her is she's got, she's very thorough, like, um, but not in a, like, boring, over detail. <laughs> not in a boring way. Good. No, but she like <laughs> does. And she does each group such justice, and I yes. think that felt so honouring. Um, mm. I, she interviewed me a few years back about the exclusive brethren, and um, I've definitely had some experiences where people have interviewed me, and I felt that they, you know, like journalists or somebody looking for something. And later, when I've read what they did with what I told them, yeah, they didn't do it justice. They, mm. they, they, they messed it up. They reflected some stuff badly. Yeah, whereas Sarah was so mm. careful and so honouring um, mm-hmm. with with what she shared and really careful and very, very accurate, which is hard to do. It's hard to yes. get every single little weird mm-hmm. belief practice about these groups accurately down. It's, yeah, it's really hard. And so I really admire her thoroughness and carefulness there. And then she, yeah, she often interviews former members and survivors from groups and so she weaves in their stories, but then she'll often also cover that like, Things like, where did this group originate from? Mm-hmm. What are its core beliefs? Like, almost like a Wikipedia sort mm. of like on, on this group, but an audio version, which is really helpful because, again, it's yeah, not, it's never just focused on one former member's story, which is helpful because no one former member tells the whole story. So, yeah, she's good at giving a very well rounded picture of here's this group. And yeah, yeah. yeah so. And it's very unsensational. As, yeah. Oh, she's just got a really soft, gentle manner. Mm. Yeah, I was interviewed by her as well and another Laura of our leader, Hannah Harrison, and she actually mixed the two separate interviews up together and did a sort of two-part series. So she's um, a, like a thorough historian in many ways, and, and she spends an awful lot of time, you know, editing. So you have the survivor's voice and then a little bit of her um, narration. So it's very, yeah, I was quite impressed, actually, with yep, Sarah's a, work. <laughs> yeah, she's a real easy listen. And then, um, yeah. as we mentioned in our last podcast episode, she also has turned her content from these years of podcasting into a book called Do As I Say, which was released mm-hmm. about a year ago. So, mm-hmm. yep, she's she's a win. And mm-hmm. uh, a teaser for upcoming episodes, we will be interviewing her. And we actually have already interviewed her. We just haven't 
played yeah. it yet. <laughs> but uh, a little teaser for that episode, she does talk about how, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, she talks about how she, she wants something about these groups out there in the public eye so people if they're if they're drawn into a group can do a little research mm-hmm. a little google search and and learn some truth about mm-hmm. a group and so she's creating an archive of content um for all these weird and wacky groups that no mm-hmm. one's ever heard of as a public service mm-hmm. and i think Whoa. that's like that's quite it's quite remarkable and she's been doing it for quite a long time now yeah. and um would have to have a little look to see how many episodes she's up to but um she's done lots mm. yeah yeah they're very so, good and they're just a good good easy traveling listening you know if yeah. i'm traveling to christchurch i'll regularly just download the next episode and it'll it'll get me get me part way there mm. and i think one of the things that possibly helps her i don't know um is that she she's not a former member of a crazy group herself mm. and um and while that can be sometimes interesting or helpful i think in some ways it's great that she's not because she's able to be yeah probably much more objective and neutral and balanced with um mm. just weaving things weaving things together and yeah her backgrounds and i think um isn't it in media and and that sort of thing anyway so she's sort of yeah learned how to tell stories and how to mm. hear stories as well. she's a great listener so yeah okay so that that's my one now it's back to who me yeah. yeah, can I can I do a plug for the commune, uh, mm-hmm. the commune podcast, which was released by Stuff, uh, was mm. it last year or the year before? Some, I year think before? it was. Was it last mm-hmm. year? Oh, sometime the last two years. Mm. Um, this was done by um Adam Dudding and Eugene Peterson. Um, most of the series, which is a twelve part um sort of uh, uh, uh podcast series, um has got Adam's voice um, and he has done, the two of them, have done a marvellous job of telling the story of Centrepoint community. Mm-hmm. And um, as an insider, uh, someone who actually has a connection to Centrepoint, um, I have to say, and this is a shout out to the two of them, I feel like they have done the children of Centrepoint an extraordinary service. Mm-hmm. Because in my experience, talking to, and I've talked to many Centrepoint children, No one really knew that much Mm. about the history. Uh, They knew their bit and maybe Mm. some bits and pieces they gleaned. A lot of stuff they gleaned from their parents who, as founding members often or original members, they don't necessarily trust Mm. their story because it was usually a story that painted those first generation adults in a good light. Mm. So the second generation weren't always getting a good story. Mm. So uh, certainly not a joined up, integrated across across the two decades that Centrepoint ran story. So the commune sort of starts at the beginning and works its way through using the voice of a, of an original member, um, Barry uh, Leslie, who mm. is a woman, not a man. <laughs> she got given a, a man's name by her parents. Um, mm. But she's a woman dear to my heart as well. Um, so that was uh, particularly moving for me to listen to this nar- narrative mm. that happened over 12 years episodes and I was um I wasn't involved in it but I was I wasn't interviewed um it came Adam actually approached me right at the beginning of his research and asked me to give him some con- connections and I was I was like oh this is a bit you know like center point people are pretty weary you have to be have to be careful but I, I read his book I talked to him he because he's written a book about his own life and I talked to him and discovered that I thought that he was a pretty trustworthy person mm. and ended up recommending a number of people I knew and um, quite a few of them ended up being interviewed so for mm. me it's interesting to listen mm. to this story of this community that I knew bits and pieces of but through listening over these 12 episodes I was able to kind of go oh really mm. did it happen that way and oh gosh mm. you know like it, the, the whole chronology of the story um, from from beginning through the downfall and then sort of um, later. Mm. And 
Yeah, like like I say, is that you don't often, when you've gone through something hard, you don't often get an objective outside eye pulling in multiple voices. Mm -hmm. Like he interviews like the neighbor up the road who was trying to stop the community from growing, who was a lawyer. He interviews um, a guy in the media who went along to a group, um, but uh, was there for a week or two, but he just had his perspective. He interviews lots of children. Um, like I said, he interviews Barry. There's lots of snippets of Bert because Bert had all of his um, Saturday morning talks. I think it was Saturday mornings. He had them all recorded. And Barry, who was the main ca character, shall we say, um, she had this archive of materials. She kept all the recordings. Um, she kept all the magazines. She kept everything in her in her house. <sighs> and so he, he he got all this content, you know, like an absolute treasure trove. And so he's... The two of them, Barry, uh, sorry, Adam and Eugene, have created mm. um, history. They've they've created some objective content about this uh, community that caused so much controversy. Mm. Um, that so many people had such different experiences, um, and he talks to all those all many different voices, and he pulls it all together. And yeah, I I can't. It's really hard to articulate how powerful that was mm. for me as a person who had my own little part of that story. Um, mm. It, it was yeah. a gift. Yeah. that is. And I, it, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like having an adult, you know, an adult there walking along with it, with you, with it, but they weren't mm. actually there mm. um, to be able to help you to make sense of some of it. So I, I think it, you know, it was, it was, and, and uh, talking to people afterwards, a lot of people were quite anxious about the whole thing. They mm. thought it was going to be salacious. And yeah, here we go again, the whole drama of stirring up the history about Centrepoint. Mm. There's a lot of negativity about media around people who've been at Centrepoint. Mm -hmm. But with the people I spoke to were pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. So I think it's a high quality, it's high quality um, uh, production. It ended up winning an international award um yeah so it was Great. called the commune and yeah. staff put it out and they had a an uh, um written version of it didn't they yes yes was they did that, was got... that a short form to, an enticement to read no uh, to no they've got a they've got a whole web page a... for it so if you Brilliant. go on the the web page of just type in the commune mm -hmm. stuff and you'll pop up with the web page and you can either download and listen to the podcast or you can read a transcript mm -hmm. and I think for some people that's actually easier particularly mm -hmm. if it's triggering content yeah also um I don't know how people listen to so many podcasts because I struggle to find that quiet time in a day to do it maybe if you're someone who travels a lot um or if you've got special earbuds and you can mow your lawns on a really noisy lawnmower and listen to podcasts but I I mean even though we don't have children or noisy cats or anything I simply struggle to get <laughs> quiet in a day so I don't actually listen to podcasts it's not my preferred mm. method of you know internalizing information but I'm I, I can read something quite quickly mm. and mm. and take it in that way if one moments and snatches of time to read so mm -hmm. yeah I find that um podcasts yeah when do you guys listen to podcasts oh normally <laughs> when I'm exercising you didn't mention exercise <laughs> I'm a bit worried about your physical no. health you don't <laughs> exercise it's exercise well I might do DIY building but I can tell how you do, how do your headphones fit on when you're mountain biking with your helmet though kids wouldn't that <laughs> you know? it's when I'm going for a run I see how do you know the person behind you hasn't fallen off your bike? Like, you can't hear them if you like listening to a podcast. The thing that I have found very helpful is discovering playback speed. And yes, I, I do actually listen to some things that usually at 1.5, frequently at 1.8, especially if it's like I'm not super invested yeah. in a big way in this content, but I want to get the gist of it. Mm -hmm. And so I put it on super fast and it sounds terrible, but I get the gist of what they're talking about. And I'm like, yeah. So that that does help, but mm -hmm. but it also makes it quite intense. And yeah. I don't really like that, you know, like I'll do that if I'm racing around doing the chores and and it's just all high intensity for an hour or so. But you can't sustain it. You can't, you know, you you don't want to do that for a three hour drive having yeah. to wait, what are we really do fast. <laughs> 
One time I, I noticed I was doing quite a lot of podcast listening a number of weeks ago. It was when I was painting. So you put these little earbuds in, but I've got this ear that's a little bit strange shape and the earbuds just don't fit properly and they dropped awfully close near the bucket of paint. (laughs) I'm like, oh, that would be the end of the painting. Yeah, Yeah. so, yeah, I've I've just heard of these amazing earphones you can buy, like if you're doing renovations and DIY, like builders use them, they're like Bluetooth, and apparently you put them on, they're like noise cancelling, and you can actually hear people better. They're so good that when someone speaks, it actually dampens down all the outside noise and amplifies the voice. So you, wow. you keep them on and people are talking to you and they think you're being rude because you haven't taken your earphones off, but actually you can hear them better. But wow. apparently they're exorbitantly expensive. So it's either get those exorbitantly expensive headphones or a new like lawnmower, a, a, <laughs> a new ride-on or something. I don't like think this. you're going to choose the headphones, Liz. <laughs> so has anyone else got any other ones? Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, I guess you kind of put your finger on on an interesting thing is that it, t- today there are just an overwhelming number of things to listen to and read and watch. Mm. Of the making of many books, there is no end, said I think somebody in Ecclesiastes thousands of years ago. And um, we might add to that now, of the, you know, the making of many books and podcasts and and um, videos, there is no end. <laughs> Um, and and it is overwhelming for people, isn't mm. it? I find it overwhelming. Like, where the heck do you begin? How do you know what to, yeah, what to prioritize, what to trust? Which is mm. why we do things like this podcast right now to say, hey, we've done some of the hard work for you. Here's some really good trustworthy recommendations. Um, and that's the beauty of things like reviews and stuff as well. Like eh? looking online. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, we've I've we've definitely got some more podcasts that we can recommend. Who wants to go next? Um, I've let- just been. Well, I've got one that I do listen to every week. So I somehow managed to find time in my week for one little podcast. And it's out of a really small country. And it's quite surprising um, that a small country would actually have such fantastic content. And it's with these three co-hosts, these girls that just sort of used to get to know each other. They just like found each other. And then they started chatting and realized they had quite lively conversations. And then said, why don't we just start a podcast? And that's it's called Cult Chat. And it's these girls, Kaz and Lindy and then Liz. And so I listen to it every week without fail because yeah. I happen to be one of the like content editors for the podcast. <laughs> and it's my job to put together like the YouTube clips and extract the audio <laughs> and send it off to Plains FM, our fantastic group who um, media group who broadcasts us over the airwaves. And so I listen every week. I can't even do it on high speed. Lindy, the program I use um, doesn't actually give me that option until it's finished. So mm. I listen to Cult Chat every week. And the funny thing is, you know, like you you do your recording, you do what we do. And then like it might be weeks later that you come around to actually process that particular one. And you listen to it again. And on the whole, girls, I sit there and think, goodness, that was really interesting. Right, jumping Jefferson. Is that what you said earlier? <laughs> jumping, jumping Jehoshaphat. Jumping oh, Lin- Jehoshaphat. Linda, if it's you're not gonna good. if if you're not gonna curse properly, <laughs> honestly. Say that word. Don't curse <laughs> at all. There it is. Quite right. Jumping <laughs> Jehoshaphat, my giddy aunt. And I've I have to come up with some more because I'm really I'm not allowed to use the, the big words on this. We used to read Tintin and Captain Haddock always used to say some great things, like like blistering barnacles. Anyway, my yeah. point is Right, jumping Jephosaphat. We've, we've no, no, Jephosaphat. Yeah, is that what you're saying, Liz? Uh, no, what I'm saying is I really enjoy listening to our podcast. It's nice <laughs> and clean. I, it, um, I think it's, um, you know, it's just good for general Kiwi public, to be quite honest. And I'm really encouraged with the number of professionals that I know are listening. And to mm-hmm. me, that warms my heart because that means there are people who care about people who are socially entrapped in our country. And I think if we can, you know, continue, um, yeah, working and chatting together, I think we will raise awareness in New Zealand uh, and internationally, perhaps. But obviously we just have our own little passionate. On that note, we could say, hey, um, to our listeners, why don't you right now flick off a link of Cult Chat to, um, yeah, to to your GP, to your therapist, Mm. to um, to Mm. someone who you think might benefit. (gasps) From this, well, you'd be. Oh, what? 
oh, we're missing, like, people writing us great reviews. I mean, I don't know how many times, you know, we need to pay Lindy's husband or cousin or auntie or whatever to write reviews. But, you know, we need some reviews on, like, our Spotify and YouTube channels. Well, so far... So far, the, the reviews on Apple are four. There's seven of them, and four of them are from my family. <laughs> so, Confessions. Confessions. Yeah, so supportive, Kaz. If someone from my family in the resin were to leave a review, it would be probably terrible. Oh, yeah. uh, they wouldn't want to be encouraged yeah. and help chat at all. Hey, I do have another um, podcast I'd like to talk about, and um, this is very survivor story focused. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, so I'm, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but feel free to go and check it out, especially if you're interested in the conservative Christian high control group, um, particularly, or have a particular interest in the um, exclusive brethren or Plymouth Brethren Christian Church, as they now call themselves. So it's a podcast called Get a Life, mm -hmm. um, which is a great little phrase, a little catchy catchy title they've got there and yeah they it's a bunch of former exclusive brethren member members who are primarily based in Canada so other side of the world but they um they started only about a year or so ago mm. and they have just gone crazy like hammer and tongs um they drop I think just about an episode a week and have done what? the exclusive and, uh, brethren must hate that oh no, they must hate that yeah and that they're really funny because um none of them are like trained media professionals. They're just like very heartfelt, very emotive former members. Um, there's there's quite a number of times when I'm sitting there like cringing, like, oh my gosh, could you get done for defamation for saying that? Or um, or as well, they quite often just yeah, they they don't run to a strict time schedule. They let former members just blurt out their stuff. Um <sighs> So sometimes it's quite informal. Sometimes it's a little bit like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, that's the first time this person shared this story and it's mm. quite, quite raw or whatever. Um, but, yeah, so they, 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 they're they quite funny. They're, um, yeah, all very different personalities and um, they've got great sort of banter and interaction between them. So, yeah, Get a Life podcast if you're interested in hearing more stories from former exclusive brethren. Um, listening to a bunch of them will give you – a big insight into what it's like to be a former member of the Brethren. Mm. Uh, and the other thing they've done a few things of that I think are helpful, um, Kaz, you mentioned earlier about how valuable it was to have somebody um, pull together the story of Centrepoint Commune. And, yeah, I think they do that. But then they also they've begun doing a few, I was just interviewed for one recently for them, where we spent an hour or so looking at what is this term, the opposers, mm. that, the brethren use and and discussing this whole thing that high control groups do where they really vilify and demonize anybody who speaks up about them mm. a bit like us doing the what do organizations do in the under threat episode yeah um mm. yeah we spent a whole session talking about what it means to be an opposer um mm. i think Jehovah's witnesses call them apostates and and i don't what do they call them in glory veil like people who leave and then speak up they actually don't have a category, but what I've noticed is they do have that category of opposers. They're worse if they speak up than if they just leave. And so, yeah. Oh, I don't have a word for them because um, Shin Chon Ji calls them the betrayers. I think like quite wow. often groups have got these real intense names yeah. for it those. Yeah, you you should suggest some names to Glory Vale. They need to really get with the program and and have a have. A, what about something like the demonizers or something? I think I think I think they should just be demons, shouldn't they? <laughs> I mean, they definitely devil call them, incarnate. They call them bitter. I mean, is that any surprise? Yeah. But that's the ones who speak up. They're bitter. Yeah, 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 but, yeah mm, the, but that's the, an adjective. You need to turn bitter into a noun. Yeah, yeah the, the bitterest or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know why they don't name them? Because they just oh. cease to exist. They're supposed ah. to just cut them off like they're dead. You know? yeah, well, but the yeah. point is they're not dead they've risen from the dead <laughs> and they're zombies and they're coming to get you <laughs> well isn't it great that these people who have left um the plymouth brethren christian church have yeah. a, sta a platform a have stage a life. and yeah. they've got a life they've found a life that's it's fantastic isn't it it's, it's like amazing. wow some of the you know technology gosh some yeah, amazing yeah. things have come out of it yeah, it's been a game changer, eh, into social media and podcasts. And mm -hmm. even on the one hand, it's overwhelming for those, you know, everyone trying to figure out what do I prioritise with listening to. Um, mm. it's, 
it's incredible to have all these stories and and um like you guys have said there's there's an archive a digital archive that's mm. going to be here um yeah. for a long time i think that's mm. powerful and maybe we should hit to a wrap up but i just remember when we were looking at what to call our our, our podcast cult chat how much yeah. fun we had trying to come up with all the sorts of different names so i just love some of the names of them like you know cultish get a life but there's one called Indoctrination. Podcast. Yeah, I wanted to bring that one up. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's really good. That's worth looking at. Quite a lot of it, psychology. Yeah, it's and, run and by Rachel Bernstein, Bernstein. Who's, a, who's a therapist. I can't remember what kind. She's been helping yeah. um, leavers for 30 years. So yeah. she's got some incredible insights. She always interviews she really does. interesting people. Yeah, yep. another Very one's good called podcast. Cult Hackers. Don't you yep. love that? Like cult hackers. I, I've been listening to cult hackers lately. I really like the perspective. It's a it's a, a father daughter duo, yeah. and he is a organizational psychologist. Really, mm. he trained as an organizational psychologist, which I find fascinating because yeah, he can talk about it. group dynamics in a really informed way. Uh, so that's a British <laughs> British group. I really that's like right. that. That's called cult hackers, and then there's one I love. It's called the Cult Vault. It's just yeah. like got that big rhyme, so I love that. Yeah, so look, Kay- another... Casey's Casey's on cult fault, and yes. she's just she's a person who just was really interested in cults, yeah, and amazing. she started a podcast, and it just took off. And she's got a really um conversational style, really kind of yeah. she's she just she's great she's doing the masters of coercive control at um yes. uh salford university this oh, yes, year yes. and me and her have been yarning uh, so we all... i'm thinking of doing the same thing so yeah she's I that's thought... great I've got another one I'd like to throw on there that I've listened to a wee bit of, and it's called A Little Bit Culty. Yes. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, and that's Sarah Edmondson and Anthony mm-hmm. or Nappy, um, and they were part of, I think their story's shown in The Vow, which a lot of people have seen. Was mm-hmm. that released this year? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's older than that. Is it? Okay. They were um, they were involved in Nixium. Is ne- that how you say Nexium. it? Nexium. Nexium. Yeah. And so how would you describe Nexium? It was like a sex it's, cult. It's an email. It's, it's an email email. Multiple yeah. marketing. Well, it was, and it was around self development, though, wasn't it? like your best life, life now, you know. Yeah, and it involved um, this guy who's been put away, the guy yeah, in Reef, charge. Uh, what's Keith his name? Canary. He's been put away for 120 years. Yeah, and, oh, and he, lots of yeah. his underlings. Remember, his one of his underlings was the woman who um, starred in Superman. She's an actress. 120 and, years. Great. Mm, Jumping, could, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Jumping Jehoshaphat, exactly. The Americans to, know how to lock people up. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. abused so many people. Oh, they all terrible. got branded. These women oh, all got yeah. branded and they got basically treated as sex slaves. It's and it's just, it's really, really terrible. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, some justice has been done there. But yeah, it, the, the um, Little Bit Culty is run by this husband and wife team who mm. both were in that group. And they, it's yeah. pretty jolly. It's a sort of peppy kind of it's silly, laughy. As well as te- um, deep stuff. But like, oh, name, yeah, yeah. The, like the name says, mm. it, it's, it's helpful because they, yeah, they talk quite often about those things. Like, what is it just, is it culty or is it not? Mm-hmm. Or is it a little bit culty? Looking at those pictures. Yeah, those well, I just, yeah. I just think that tonight's episode has shown that there are so many options out there. There's no excuse for anyone to not have some way of um, listening in and being educated about what cults are, what they look like, how you can help people who are in these cults, don't you think? Mm. I've come up with a solution for you to listen to more podcasts. Mm. You actually need to be a full-time painter, obviously. Tennis elbow. It's got or, to be. Or yeah. she could do a um, half marathon. That's the other one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dog mom, listening. Me. Yeah, me. do start to do some training. Well, I think yep. I'll just sit here on my nice sunny holiday in Nelson, everybody. I've got a bit more time ahead of me now. And so I'm just going to go and work on, you know, work on my tan. And I'll mm-hmm. remember just to slip, stop that while we're there. So I just want to yep. thank everyone. What do you think? Are we ready to say goodbye to everyone? Oh, we're ready to say goodbye, yeah. And let them go off on their bike rides and their half marathons or their <laughs> or their holiday swim. And uh, it's been great to join you. Um Join us for the next episode. We're going to be looking at um, movies and sort of films yeah. in the culture yep. sphere. Series, yep. What to watch. And the fun thing about watching things, in my opinion, which is a little bit different with books and audio, is that they're usually designed to do with others. And in, in my opinion, I like watching things with others. If there's a mm. movie that I really want to watch, I I literally I always want to invite around a bunch of people because I want to watch it with them and I'm one of those terribly annoying people who talks all the way through movies. <laughs> oh. What's happening there? Did you see that? And, <laughs> and I want to discuss it afterwards and I want to, yeah. So I reckon um, what we'll talk about next time, you can do little holiday watches with mm-hmm. your 
Bano and friends, pull them in for a bit of some culty watching and, and the remainder of your holiday. Brilliant. Mm. All right, well. Yeah, it's been lovely to have our listeners and our viewers on today and we hope that you have learned something today about how you can cult-proof your life. There's something that you can go out and learn about and get a little bit more aware about uh, how to prevent um, yourself or whānau ending up in a group or getting out of one. Um, please share. Oh, I don't have my sunglasses. I just got my glasses. Please share um, this with your friends. Uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, have a look, have a watch to us on our the YouTube channel, and come back next time. Listen to our next episode with us. Awesome, Kaki. Bye, everyone. Kia ora. Beep. If anything in today's episode was difficult or upsetting for you and you would like to talk to somebody, we encourage our New Zealand listeners to free call or text 1737 for support from a trained counsellor. Or you might like to visit the resources section of the Olive Leaf Network website where you can find a range of organisations and resources that might be able to support you. We would also like to remind you that the views and thoughts and opinions that have been expressed in this programme are the speakers alone and Cult Chat does not necessarily endorse or share them.